Hey everybody and welcome to another episode of Knocked Conscious with Mark Poles. Today's conversation is with Robin Clare, author of Feast and Famine, Healing Addiction with Grace. She was on with us about a month ago and she had decided to come by again and speak about her new writing program called Writing from the Heart. She also wanted to do a couple readings with us, so let's see how those go. And off to the interview. Writing from the Heart is a full-service coaching program that Robin has started. It's for aspiring spiritual writers to become accomplished authors. This multidimensional program is designed to help you find your clarity on the writing journey. Options include a single session to define your book, ongoing coaching and accountability plans, outlining your book with you, and ghostwriting if needed. Today, Robin has graciously agreed to share her offerings from her life coaching part of her work and do some pretty amazing readings. So Robin, how are you doing today? I'm great, Mark. Thank you for asking. It's so great to be here again. And I'm excited to be here um, to share two different types of readings. And then who knows, maybe we'll go somewhere else in the conversation. I'm not surprised but, if we don't. <laughs> yeah, part of why I like being on your show is because it's just so free, right? There's, it's like, take us where we're supposed to be exactly it's limitless and <laughs> we have to be open to that and and that's that's what's great about a conversational type format versus these mm -hmm. you know three minute blocks who knows where we're gonna go and i'm excited about that journey as well so thank you so much for coming back i really mm -hmm. appreciate it yeah you're welcome so um so I'm going to do two types of readings today that I know of. The first is called an Akashic Record reading. And so the Akashic Records are the home of your soul's past, present, and future lifetime information. So another way of saying it is that it's like the internet of the spiritual realm. If you need to know something about your soul's journey, it's in there. So why that's important is because spirit, spirituality and spiritual uh, holistic type of um, modalities are based on the premise that we are a soul or a spiritual being having a human being experience. Yes, we're, it's so, like the occupant of the vessel, right? The, the, the yes. human being is the vessel. Mm -hmm. And the occupant, the driver would be the soul in that case. Yes. And so we want to stay connected to our soul for many reasons. But I think the most profound reason is because our soul drives, drives the vessel, right? Yeah. And, and so our soul has a desired destiny. And so one of my other offerings is something I call the soul plan. Um, this was shared with me by my guides. They said, if we tell people, why they're why they are here will they stop searching and start serving because most spiritual people get caught in um a level of uh learning that i call mastery where they're never know enough they never are healed enough you know it's it's and and then so they just keep learning 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 and they get caught in this and caught in this and then they don't fulfill their soul's destiny and so that was why the soul plan came. But prior to that, I, I was doing Akashic record readings and um, archetype readings. So the Akashic record reading, as I said earlier, is so I told I explained what the Akashic records were. And I'm just going to say it one more time because it's really important. It's the home. It's like the hall of records. It's like town hall, but for everybody, <laughs> the hall of records that contains your soul's past present and future lifetime information each of our souls records are maintained by a group of etheric beings that i call your souls collective and your souls collective could be ascended masters spirit guides angelic beings mystical teachers and deceased loved ones and within the deceased loved ones they could be people you may have met or never met right we have a lot of deceased loved ones that we've never met, at least in this lifetime, Certainly. right? Yeah. So it could, it's a combination and they're like responsible for the integrity of your record. And so they like to hang around and make sure that to the best of your ability, you are going to complete your soul's desired destiny in this lifetime. So what do I mean by that? I, I believe that our soul is has a choice to come here 
right? Yeah. But usually in that in that practice in the in the spiritual world, uh, this is for lay people just because everyone's on a different part of the journey, right? So right. to reel it back real quick on the on the Akashic record part, my understanding is every thought, it's not even every action, it's every thought that you've ever had part of your soul as part of your soul. So even if you haven't acted on something but thought something in you know differently than you acted, mm -hmm. it still it still records that in some way. Is that correct? Sure. Yeah, okay. it's the entire journey. Yeah. And right? the other thing about this this the soul part with the spirituality is the it, I believe the modality that you're talking about is the spirit, the soul chooses the host prior to birth or if there's a walk-in it it's already made a contract with that other yes. soul to leave and whatnot so you yes. choose for example you choose your parents or you choose your 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 oh, circle yeah. right in that world you choose everybody and 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 what i find interesting i love like so it was hard for me as a person who uh my addiction basically started at seven years old when my mom put me on a diet and so i've had this back and forth with my mom around food and talking about it, not talking about it, asking me how, you know, how, you know, I was on a radio show and she said, Oh, I saw you on the radio show and I wanted to tell you, and I wanted to hear how proud I was of you. And what I heard was your face looked thinner. Mm -hmm. That's <laughs> and I'm like, okay, mom as well. Uh, yes. I can say that I ballooned up to about uh, 297 pounds, I think, on the scale mm. at one point. And I actually pulled out a picture yesterday and just was flabbergasted. And I'm, I addressed that, that side of it, and I'm at 210 pounds now. And no, it's nice. just slowly, just over time, is just melting away. Not, I'm not even conscious of it. And it's, you know, not holding on to that part, you know, that trauma yeah. or, that, or that pain. And, you know, I want to say that just I know this is not the conversation, but I want to address something that that you just said, this idea of weight melting away when I was in my obsessive eating and uh, disorder, I hated that expression, hmm. hated it. Because I'd be like, how could that? How could that be? Yeah. But You're I, working I so just hard to like consciously make it not happen, right? Or, yeah, or to not yeah. put on a pound or something. Yes, but I also just went on the scale after being in recovery for eighteen months, and I'm like twelve pounds lighter. Awesome. Yeah. That's so great. I think that it's because we're not focused on the the trauma and and the obsessive behavior yes. and you know you often wonder you see thin people and you're like why are they so thin mm -hmm. you know and it's usually because they're not obsessing about food right right well, that's the truth it's like the thing you focus on is generally the thing that will upset that will make you obsessed with it right so yes. to, i use analogy like a bat a baseball player doesn't go up to bat and say don't miss the ball Right. He says, hit the ball, right? Because <laughs> yes. even if he does, even though he puts the don't in front of it, the energy is missed, right? It's kind of like when we talk about diet, it's like, don't gain weight or don't eat that. It's like, no, you've already told yourself you're going to eat it. And you're trying to tell yourself to not do it after the fact already. You've already consciously decided or unconsciously decided to mm -hmm. eat it, you know? So it's one of those types of things where once, like you said, out of sight, out of mind. And it just, you look, I haven't gone on a scale in months. And then you look and you're like, how, how'd that happen? You know? Yeah, yeah. So anyway, so back to the Akashic Records. Um, what else can I tell everybody about them? So the why, why would you want to know, you know, about the Akashic Records? And I think it's to get an idea of what your soul's intention was for this lifetime. I Because I think that, I don't know if anybody else, but certainly this has happened to me. And I'm not going to say I don't know anybody else because I know everybody else. You know, like when you you feel like you're repeating the same lesson over and over and over again, right? Yes. And that's typically a soul level lesson. And you're not going to get out of it until you until it teaches you everything that you need to know, right? Because yeah. it's part of the soul's desired destiny. And so I think that by knowing what's in your Akashic records, you know, people would at first want to be like, was I Cleopatra? Was I Napoleon? And I'm like, I don't, I, I don't know. And, well, and that's what's and, funny, and, right? Welcome to ego, everybody. Like, what yeah. was I? Who was I? How special yeah. was I? Right. Yeah. Versus how did I contribute to the greatness of the universe? Right. I mean, right. It's a totally different mindset. And, and it's funny because you told me to pick some questions and we'll go into those later, but it's hard because they're very ego self-driven. Like what about me? And it's not about me. It's about right. how we can serve 
to help everyone else because that's everyone else's duty as well. And I would, I would maybe argue with you that it is Please. about you. It's about you being self full. Yes. Not selfish. Yes. Because the more self full yes. you are, Mark or, and, or me and everyone that's listening, the more you can serve others. Yeah. I think so, a, a good way to say it would be like to be more complete. Yes. To, to be the best yes. complete human being you can be. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I agree with that 100%. Yeah. So, so um, my, one of my favorite Akashic record stories was a woman came to me, probably my second one or out of the gate. Right. <laughs> and she said, um, uh, okay, I'm here. She said, I'm, I'm retired now. I'm looking to know what it is that I should do for the rest of my life. Right. And I'm like, okay, you know, like right. so yeah. new, so oh. new. I'm like, oh shit, I'm not going to do this right, right? <laughs> and it's your second one. I mean, come on, be honest. You, you've got a little bit of the thing going, oh no, am I going to get this right? You know. <laughs> Actually, I was laughing. I always still do that. I'm like, oh, what if I can't do this? And I was talking to, I was talking to a client this morning who's probably my longest term. She goes, what? She goes, what if you can't do this? <laughs> like, it just happens. It's like a, I have a, and and even Mark, when you asked me to do this, I was laughing because I was like, I can't do this. What? <laughs> and you've done it for how long, right? <laughs> yeah, 10 years, right? Yeah. Well, that's funny about that too, is we talk about that because it's like every time I go into a meditation, when I, when I meditate, I get nothing by myself. But in a group, I get a lot of stuff. And mm -hmm. I always wonder if I use the last one up on the last meditation, like, will I ever see that again? You know, you go, yeah. it's, it's like an imposter syndrome, right? It's almost like yes. we don't feel like, not that we're not worthy, but it's in there, right? Obviously oh, our yeah. upbringings have kind of had that, uh, but you know, we're and both it's East such Coast a people. <laughs> we're, and it's, it's such a unique thing we're doing that it's not, even though I would say to you and I would say to everybody that. When we're in that field, when we're in the meditation field, when we're in the Akashic field, that's real life. <laughs> yeah. This is just the play. Correct. This is just this where is... we come to yeah. learn and fulfill our soul's destiny. But right. that other world, the non-physical world, that's the real world. Yeah, it and is. And we're only here very temporarily. This is like a blink of a, mm -hmm. a blink of something. So anyway, this client comes in. She sits down. She says to me, I need to know what I'm supposed to do next. I'm retired. So I open the records like, um, what's that expression? There's nothing there. Um, there's a cute expression. Like when you hear nothing, I don't know. I can't oh, remember. Uh, I, I don't know. Maybe like I'll birds tweeting or something. Oh, oh crickets. You hear crickets. crickets. Yeah, crickets Actually, right? I have a sound effect for that if you'd like, but no. Okay. Go. <laughs> all, I'm not going to do that to you. So, so the, it was nothing. And so I said, well, I'm also an energy healer. Let me just get up and do oh, Sorry, everybody. <laughs> I just knocked over all my deities. Um, welcome welcome to the uh, the way we're doing this going forward, everybody. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> From so, our homes in our little yes. corners of our, of our houses. <laughs> yeah. So I got up and I started doing some hands-on energy healing, you know, looking at her chakras which are the energy centers and seeing what how i could help her to you know relax and and have more energy flowing through her entire system when i come around so i started on the left and i go around the back and i'm working and i come around the right and i and i go to sit down still crickets from the akashic records i see four letters start to manifest energetically on her chest big capital letters in gold the first one is an R, the second one is an E, the third one is an S, and the fourth one is a T. Okay. And I said, I'm really sorry, I'm only getting one word from the Akashic Records. And I said, and that is the word rest. And she opened her eyes and she said to me, I told you I was retired. But I also didn't tell you that um, my daughter has been has been very ill for the last six months and my husband and I got divorced. And she said, I really came here looking for permission to rest. That's great. And she said, I'm I'm complete. Thank you, Robin. Yeah. Right. It's so interesting. Yeah, it's a beautiful and thing. It's a beautiful it's message. A be 
it's a beautiful message and here i am like the whole time what's the matter with you why can't you do this and validation so I, right she's she was va- looking for validation yes and, and she got it and and so you know over the years you know people will be like that doesn't that doesn't fit me i'm like well let me know when it does that's what i mm-hmm. say to them well, right it's not those, always tomorrow it's it could yes. be a month down the road it could be two minutes after it's crazy yeah. how it works or or someone will say, is that you speaking, Robin, or spirit? And I'll be like, yes. Yeah. That's exactly <laughs> what's what the like... difference. We're all spirit. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. You know, they're all using us. So anyway, that's the Akashic Records. The way that I get into it is through a prayer process. So I'll do the prayer with you and I Excellent. and the listeners. And then the second type of reading that I plan to do is uh, an archetype card reading and this is from carolyn mace's card deck so this came to me during the soul plan when when the when remember i talked about the the, my guide said to me if we tell people why they're here will they stop searching and start serving and they said use the archetype cards as part of the the reading the soul plan reading and so what are the arc what is an archetype let's just start there yeah, absolutely so please, Carl- please please drill it down to the most basic because this is a new concept and like i said the not mm. conscious idea is about trying to bridge that gap between people who have had experiences or feel that and spiritual people and scientific people they're we're trying to get everyone on the same page at least to look at the same problem from different angles so we can find a solution yeah. to help everyone be better so thank yeah. you for being very uh, ex- descriptive and, and everything. Yeah, you're welcome. So so an archetype uh, is um, was uh, developed by Carl Jung, the the famous um, psych psychiatrist, and he said that there are personality types that are common to everyone across the planet, and that that. You know, so a good example is um, the victim, right? The child, yes, right? The Victim's saboteur. The Victim's the the one that's really taken forefront, right? In in today's yeah. society, mm-hmm. it's really taken. The victimhood is everyone's a victim. Yeah. Yes, and the saboteur, right? Yeah. Um, the child. You know, I'm all uh, of those the for addict. Some How's that happen? <laughs> we all are actually. <laughs> to some so extent. So thank correct, you for saying for sure. that. All of those are. Everyone has those. Right, right. There are certain ones that everyone has. And there's something I want to do later if we have time because I, I find it so interesting. Robin, um, spoiler alert, we always have time. Okay, So good. whatever okay. you want to, however you'd love to do this, I am on, I am on your journey today and I love okay, it. Okay, good. Okay, so those are the archetype cards. So what I do for the archetype section is I... I work with your souls collective from the Akashic records and I clear, do my best to clear my mind and clear, uh, clear myself and allow them. I spread the cards out and they pick a card that represents your past, a card that represents your present and a card that represents your future. And then we'll go over those. Oh, that'd be great. I love that. Okay. Yes. All right. So I'm ready to open the Akashic Records if if you if you're good with that, Mark, unless you have any questions for me at this moment. I think we're ready to go. Thank you. Okay. I, just in advance, thank you for sharing your gift with us and your ability because not everybody does that. It's kind of hard sometimes, but I, I'm just so grateful. So thank you. Yes, you're welcome. And it's fun for me. Um, you know, my life is so bit much busier now, so I don't have as much time for these. So um, someone wanted to do a soul plan with me and I'm like, okay, yay. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I was all excited to be able to go back and do it because the soul plan's interesting. We could do it as like an, um, a, a verbal conversation, but when people buy the full soul plan, I actually channel a letter to them from their souls collective. Oh, wow. That's and great. it's very powerful. It ties in these archetypes with what what their soul is intention was. And it, it's quite it's a big commitment on my part because it takes hours absolutely to do that and 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 to get through that. But there's I, I love it because then they have something tangible Tangible. (laughs) that they can take with them i mean all of my sessions are recorded um if people want me to 
Um, and then I just send them off to them in Dropbox. It's funny because when I first started, you know, we had the, the tape recorder, you know, it's like now we have all this awesome technology. I have a funny past life regression story I'll have to share with you after. Okay. Afterward, okay. <laughs> okay, good. So um, I'm going to open the records. I'm going to read the prayer process. So let me tell you who this is the pathway prayer to access the heart of the Akashic Records. And this was developed by um, by Linda Howe. And she's one of the most highly regarded Akashic Record teachers on the planet. She's my teacher. And she has wonderful books and classes. So you don't, you can actually buy her books and open your own Akashic Records. I actually have, li- I've gone to some of her books as well. I can, I can yes. attest to that. Yes. Yes. So she's a wonderful, funny teacher. She's awesome. Okay. So here we go. Everybody close your eyes while we're doing this, unless you're driving while you're listening to Mark's <laughs> podcast. No driving, eyes closed. Okay. And so we do acknowledge the forces of light, asking for guidance, direction, and courage to know the truth, as it is revealed for our highest good and the highest good of everyone connected to us. O Holy Spirit of God, protect me from all forms of self-centeredness and direct my attention to the work at hand. Help me to know Mark in, in the light of the Akashic Records, to see Mark through the eyes of the Lords of the Records me to share the wisdom and compassion that the masters, teachers, and loved ones and the souls collective of Mark have for him. The records are now open. And just one moment, I just need to do an an additional prayer by myself. And the records are now open. Okay. All right, Mark. Mark, can you tell me your middle name or middle initial? Sean, S-E-A-N. Mm-hmm. So one more time. I'm going to look it down for here for just a minute. Sean, S-E-A-N. Mm-hmm. Great. Okay. The records are now open. <laughs> so there's great excitement from your soul's collective. You can open your eyes now, Mark. I know. I, I'm trying to stay centered, too, because I'm very yeah. energetic. So I'm trying okay, to stay. Okay, good. Yeah. So there's there's a, lot of, there's a lot of great energy here for you today. There's also a lot of great energy for the audience because um, this is not often done in a group setting like this. So, so it's great. So, um, so your souls collective is glad to meet you. Um, I'm hearing that there's a great grandmother in your, who is part of your, um, deceased loved ones on the souls collective. Did you know any of them? Not my great grandmother. No. Yeah. Great grandmother. I didn't know any great grandparents. Yeah. So just know that. Do you know what side on? Or like father or mother side, possibly? I'm seeing mother side. So maybe you can ask your mom about that. That would make sense. That's where I would have gone with that if I were to. Yeah, because she she had to be somewhat connected spiritually to get this role. Um, And so she's been a guide for you your entire life. And so so I want to say this. when, when I hear messages from the Souls Collective that comes in on my left side, you may look, see me. I'm going to say this out loud, everybody. You may see me look to the left or look to the right. To the, If I look to the right, it's other deceased loved ones, just people like knocking at the door. Can I talk now? And then, um, and then on the left, uh, it's, it's your... Um, the souls collective so anyway so i already pulled the three cards right before right before we got here so let's let's begin to look at those Absolutely. and that's why i wanted to do zoom so we could look at it i did so, i want to do that as well and just for our audience it probably is best to have this watch this on youtube versus uh, <laughs> versus mm-hmm. listen to it it's much much more powerful when it you know when they have the video along yeah yeah so the the first you what the card that re- represents your past is the rescuer and what this card says just there's this information on the card and then there's information in the book 
The light attribute of the rescuer provides strength and support to others in crisis, acts out of love and no expectation of reward. I still, I'm, I'm hearing that this is, this is still in play yes. through this podcast, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And then the shadow attribute assumes that the rescued will re uh, reciprocate, keeps the rescued one needy. So something to think about from your past, you know, maybe you see examples of that where you just wanted to keep being the rescuer or the hero in someone's life and you didn't allow them to, you allowed their choice of not being enabled. You just kept enabling their not being enabled. Yes. <laughs> Sorry, that's a no, mouthful. It's, it's a no, it's exactly right. Yeah. Yeah. And so I'm going to read more about the rescuer out of my handy dandy little handbook. I love those things. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. The rescuer provides strength and support to others in crisis, acts out of love with no expectation of reward. The shadow, um, so it's pretty much the same. The shadow rescuer assumes that the rescued party will reciprocate, aims to keep the rescued one needy. So observe whether you have always sought to help those in peril, whether for altruistic or selfish motives. So what do you think about that? Is that, is this card resonate with you? It certainly does. Uh, I, I've always been the, how can I help? How can I, uh, you know, you know, I, I keep, I, for example, old past relationships, uh, romantic relationships, I'm still good friends with a number of them and many people don't generally have that. So mm -hmm. there is that kind of, like you're talking about that, keeping them not on the hook or so, but having them, you know, around, if they need help, they could always reach out. They always know they could reach out to me and, and do that. So that's definitely a true thing, whether it's altruistic or not. I, I would love to say that I'm always altruistic, but sometimes you like to hear, you know, that what you've done helped or, mm -hmm, or that, mm -hmm. that you've done that. So the ego does get in the way there for sure. But yeah, that, and I think this, I, I like this for this podcast too, because, you know, you have business reasons for doing this, but the information that you share is so incredibly helpful to people that you don't even know uh, who it's reaching, right? Right. Absolutely. Right. And what and, kind of support you're giving them. Yeah. And, and the truth is this podcast is there are, yes, I'd love for this to be a thing, right? I'd love this for this to be, to grow the way I'd like it to grow. But regardless of that, I'm, I'm still going to put it out because it's not, if it's one person that can get a message, mm -hmm, that's mm -hmm. really, that would be more than, more than enough for me. Yeah. So sometimes this first past card is like the past, really the past for someone. But I feel like this in its light aspects is really important for you. Yeah. I feel like you can say past, but I almost feel like that's a core, a, a yeah. core tenet of my, of my mm -hmm. being. Yes. Yes. So moving on to the present card um, is the Midas Whoops, Ooh. the Midas or the miser. <laughs> so let me read that to you. Um, entrepreneur, <laughs> the light attributes, entrepreneurial or creative ability to turn everything or anything to gold. Delight in sharing life's riches. The shadow attribute is hoarding money and emotions. Obs obsessive fear of losing your wealth. And so it's interesting how it can, how it's both, right? How, the Midas and the miser. How true that rings. You have no, I'll share it, but how true that rings. You have no idea right now. Okay. <laughs> so you're welcome to share, or let me just read the rest of it. And then please can, read the rest. And then I'm happy to share exactly yes. where, because this is present, correct? Yes. Okay. You're going to love. Okay. Um, okay. Okay, so the Midas miser in the book says, and it's, it's worth repeating, Midas is associated with entrepreneurial or creative ability. Everything he touches turns to gold. It's funny, it's a he in this little story here. <laughs> miser creates wealth by hoarding money and emotions at the expense of others and refusing to share them. That's very powerful. Um, challenge to learn generosity is inherent in both. 
Um, shadow miter miser uses wealth creating gifts only for personal gain and needs to control all forces for fear of losing it. And so look for a pattern of creating wealth and or confronting how far you're willing to go to create it also for the pattern of difficulty sharing wealth. So how, what do you think about that one? Well, when we talk about the present about the money piece, I have a rental property mm -hmm. and I just refinanced my new, my, my current home. And I was, I'm at that precipice of, do I continue renting or do I sell my house, pay off this house and just kind of, you know, be completely even Steven and then fund my retirement with what I would normally spend on like my current mortgage, for example. Well, I've had work done on the house and it's just been nothing but a chaos. And all I'm seeing is dollar sign, dollar sign, dollar sign, adding up, adding up. And I'm very tight right now in my chest about just breaking, e you know, just wanting it to be even Steven, you know, breaking even. So mm -hmm. I'm kind of pinching the, pinching the nickel till the Buffalo, you know, uh, <laughs> on the, on well, that front. So and so that's the Midas, I mean, the, the miser, miser part, for sure. The miser it's, it's piece. The fear of losing is where I come from because of my, I'll, I mean, it's my upbringing. Uh, it's, sure. you know, my, my mom was born in 44. My dad was born in 40, both in Germany, both in war torn Germany. So hmm. the, the lessons that they pass on to me, you know, my dad's kind of a hoarder because they didn't have anything. Right. They had nothing. Right. So I, I understand. And that was kind of instilled in me is don't lose anything, you know, burn the hand worth two in the bush kind of thing. Yes. And then you've got your other side, the entrepreneurial side. That's kind of what this is. The podcast is trying to put yourself out there and trying to make something new, you know? Yes. And with, because that they're so powerful and they're connected, right? So um, also in the spiritual community, there's this energy of, um, of poorness, you know, there's a better word for it. There's there's this energy of lack generally within the spiritual community because, first of all, in, in many of our past lives. So this is a collective DNA energy for anyone who would call themselves spiritual um, that in most situations we were either taken care of, right, being maybe the chief, I mean, the, the medicine person. Right. Right or yes, the or a nun, or yeah. the shaman, or or the priest, or the mm -hmm. nun, or the you know we we just or we we bartered a lot of things because people didn't put a financial value on our gifts, and so your souls collective is saying that if you were to always put a value, truly put a value. Um, uh, and the value being that success is measured by impact and impact is rewarded with abundance. So if you were to put a financial or, or just a value, they're saying not even a financial value on truly the impact that you're making with this podcast and with your other work, you would never have to worry about the miser part. Right. Right. It's right. True. Because the miser part is so powerful. And especially the energies that we that we were given to us from our parents. And yet everything that we've ever learned about the law of attraction and co-creating, we know that it's just not true. Right, exactly. There's giving is where you give it. You can't receive until you give. I mean, it really is that that mm -hmm. kind of backwards thing where we talked about when you're working and you want to get a promotion, you have to do the next job up to yes. before you can get that job. So you have to give mm -hmm. before you can not even expect receipt because expecting puts the ego in it, but just giving of yourself, it'll, it will reciprocate. Yeah. yeah. And, um, uh, uh, Esther Hicks in the law of attraction, you know, calls it vibrational escrow. Yes, and finally I've been, I've been for me, her, I've been to Esther Hicks's, uh, seminars in phoenix yeah you know finally i said to them this is ridiculous i said is there even is the vault is so flowing over for me i don't know what to do i don't understand why i'm not making a living doing this and it turns out that i wasn't truly valuing myself right i was yeah. valuing what i do because i think what i do is important but it, you have to value yourself so your soul's collective is saying just keep placing a value on the impact that you're making 
mark. Right. I'm and, fo- then and that's the, what I'm focused on. I'll be honest with you. Focus yeah. is on reach and just one per literally one person. Yeah. I just yeah. need someone to just not be on the path they're on, you know, just to get them yes. off the the path that they're going. I don't want to say it in a negative way because there is, you know, yeah. there's no negative positive. It just is, right? So it's just where I think they could be better and serve. Yes. So. And so, so they're going to be on their path, right? Because, yeah. but what you don't want them to do is wallow is right. the term we talked about the last time wallowing in their pain, which is suffering. Yeah. Right. It's funny and how so, comfortable the uh, pain feels when you're, you know, like bathing in it, you know, you're just washing over it. Oh it's, my gosh. Yes. It, it's, it's so familiar that we just love it more than we like the healing part. It's, it's crazy how that works. Yeah. It's easier. Yeah. For sure. <laughs> Until we get to the other side, right? Yes. Until until we're really in surrender and we're, you know, we're receiving the grace and then we're like, wow, this is really easy, right? And so um, on, um, th- so that that's important too. And I think we talked about it already. It's about living in alignment with your soul's journey, right? That's the easier path. Will you have pain? Of course. Will shitty things happen? Absolutely, Right. But Absolutely. when you're wor- walking in alignment with your soul's desired destiny, then you're able to become the observer of your life and and take things from there. All right. So moving on to the last card. The future. The future, which is the lover. Ooh. Yes. The lover. Great passion and devotion unbridled appreciation of someone or something and it's interesting because that's what we were just talking about right becoming the lover of your journey right Mm -hmm. so of course the lover of 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 partners is wonderful too and that's probably why you're still um in touch with them because your love for them ran so deep yeah that that it's hard as the lover for you to to release that and they're probably grateful too it's always been a challenge it's never interfered with current relationships for example but having you know being there for someone that i've had feelings you know for whom i've had feelings i i would like to do i would like to continue that yeah and that's what this energy is right and this is the healthier version of (laughs) <laughs> this one the rescuer right yes yeah right yeah and oh shoot did i go away You're i think i here, I, I think i just did it on my end <laughs> okay so the lover the negative of the the shadow i should say obsessive passion that harms others self-destructed devotion and so if i go to the lover Um, may manifest in anyone who exhibits great passion and devotion to another, but also to art, music, gardening, nature, or needlepoint, whatever oh. that means. <laughs> That's I it. That's your future. How about that? Yeah. yeah. Go. Go music for that Music is definitely point. my passion, so okay. it would definitely be through that. Or okay. here, this, this, this piece, what we're yeah. doing now. So. Includes unbridled affection for and appreciation of someone or something that influences the organization of your life and environment. I'm going to read that one again. Includes unbridled affection for and appreciation of someone or something that influences the organization of your life and environment. Okay. So. um, The podcast would be the something. My girlfriend yeah. would probably be the someone. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I'm grateful yeah. for all of it. So <laughs> Yeah. Definitely have and, appreciation right now. Yeah. Shadow lover manifests as an exaggerated or obsessive passion that has a destructive effect on your physical or mental health and self esteem. So, you know, we've all had those two where maybe we should have let go. Yeah. <laughs> But we hold uh, on. Part, I ex- probably that's actually the bigger challenge is letting go versus trying to help continue helping. Yeah, yeah. It's hard because, to walk away from anyone who, with whom I've shared a connection. Yeah, yes. Because I think, given that you have the rescuer and the lover, and the Midas, and the miser, all of right. those would say that you probably have a tendency to want to fix people. That is 100% correct. Yeah, because all of these really 
would be attributes of someone who wants to fix someone. And so then it's difficult to walk away Yeah. when, when the time is right. That's correct. Um, 100%. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Ask if passionate enthusiasm and or romantic love plays a dominant role in the overall design of your life and self-worth. So passionate enthusiasm. Yes. Yes, absolutely. Romantic love. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, which is it's a it's a wonderful card. It and is. I it's think it's a beautiful card. Yeah, and I think for this combination of cards, which I'll send you a picture of these. Oh, I love Mark. I love that. And if you could uh maybe tell us which archetype you got again, the Caroline Mace. Yeah, Caroline uh, Mace, M Y S S um archetype cards. Archetype cards, okay. Thank yeah, you. I don't even know if there are other archetype cards out there. Um, but you'll find hers and so yeah so it's funny i have them in the wrong order here <laughs> um and um yeah so just knowing these cards is so the point of these cards is to just show you what dominant personalities are present in your life and then just being aware that you could easily slip into the shadow aspects of them as you can um, easily be in the in the light aspects of right. them. So, for example, if, if I were to just try to use a looser interpretation, the shadow side of the rescuer is the enabler, kind of. Yes. The shadow side of the... Uh, of the my is the miser obviously the penny pinch or the one who's afraid to lose things versus giving mm -hmm. and the shadow side of the lover is what's the shadow side of the lover again is just obsessive, obsessive passion not yeah. willing not being able to to let go to let go so th those to, are those to, uh, until it becomes destructive to you right absolutely yeah yeah and then yeah, on, that's great and then Thank on you. the light side you know the rescuer provides unbridled support yeah. which is a wonderful attribute yeah. the the midas can turn anything into gold right so right. any if you focus on your intention on um on on impact right absolutely you no know, with not money impact i mean right. that's one of the most important things spirit ever said to me i'm saying it again success is measured by impact impact is rewarded with abundance yes. so when you're you guys out there women guys men girls whatever when you're looking at your career and you want to when you or you, you want to make more money you've got to look at the impact that you're making and that's why you said earlier mark that in corporate you have to start the new job first before yeah. you get the money, they're looking for the impact that you're going to be able to make. That's absolutely correct. 100%. Yeah. Yeah. So that's sad on the miser. And then of course the lover is great passion and devotion. Yeah. And, um, and so um, there's a card I'm being guided to do it. There's a okay. card that's in the, pa in this, that's blank. See that? Yes, I see that. It's yeah. blank. And so, uh, I studied with um, Lorna Johnson from the Unschool, and so there are. I and I and what I took from her work was the study of divine archetypes, and these are very powerful archetypes that are are used in conjunction to actually manifest the life that you want. And your Souls Collective is saying it's important to do this because they're they're aligned with your questions that you want that you wrote down so they okay. want me to go over these so there are um four extraordinarily light divine archetypes but they each have a shadow archetype so the first one is the lover oh boy what there you shock. have what a shock right so your opinion your power self-expression no sacrifice is too great for what you truly value you know in a, and act in accordance with your self-worth and your mantra is believing is seeing yes yes so that's the first of the powerful divine archetypes so it's very cool that you have that as your main archetype right yes the opposite of that or the shadow of the lover archetype is the prostitute which we all have i've been a mimbo before i can yeah. get it 
<laughs> yeah. So you negate your your you negotiate your self expression, your truth, your desires. You make decision based on what you can or can't afford. Yes. Right. You have low self worth, and in this case, your mantra is seeing is believing. Yeah, and that's much more my previous life, although. I'm trying to bridge that between the seeing and the believing because I've got theories and I've got thoughts about how, what spirit really is. Yeah. And I've got all these things and coming from science, having the spiritual experiences I've had, it really just shook that foundation of belief for, you know, seeing is believing versus believing. You know, yes. Is seeing. Yes. Constant and so struggle. Yeah, it, it is. It is. Um, I remember the first time I had one of my teachers telling me, you are God, Robin. And I'm like, oh, really? <laughs> and so then I would go home and I'd be like, okay, I'm going to pray to God. Wait, God, am I praying to myself? Who am I praying to? You know, and, and I mean, it was really confusing for a while until I realized that we're all part of the same divine source. We're all divine sparks of God. And that's what she meant, that right. I'm not God. Right. Right. Like people think of God, I right. am a yeah. divine being, right? Yeah. <clears throat> so it's kind of fun. It's it's um, great if we could go th with these concepts without the human interference of interpretation. <laughs> but yes, that's you know that's where religion plays its its oh, ugly yeah. head, in my opinion, is just the yes, human bastardization of the the true soul, you know, or the true spirit and whatnot, you know. Mm -hmm. I agree with you on that one. Okay, so s the next divine archetype is the sovereign. And that's when you have achieved self-mastery. You take full responsibility for making your childhood dreams come true. You are unconcerned with, you're totally unconcerned with what's fair or allowed. And you are the truth teller for your life. Your joy is your vibration of a powerful sovereign. And so the shadow of the sovereign is the child archetype. Again, one that we all have, right? I've been both, you, for sure. <laughs> yes. You're preoccupied with fairness. You expect a protected, secure life. You are looking for permission to live your life. And you make other people or circumstances responsible for your dreams. So if things aren't happening, it's not your fault. Right. I've definitely this, stepped out of that for sure. Yes. Accountability yes. is one of my biggest, and, and it's not even that it's, it's, you know, it, I, I'll use a really loose example. Um, I just launched the audio versions of the podcast on the 2nd of July, 2020. Right. Right. And I was tweaking some of the settings on my, on my piece. And every time I tweaked the setting, it sent out a new, uh, like Facebook message. So there were like 10 messages in a row about the same thing. So I saw that and I just jumped. I said, I apologize that f to everyone who got this, I know it wasn't necessarily my fault per se, but I, if I hadn't done the tweaks, you wouldn't have gotten these messages. So I take accountability and I want to mm -hmm. move forward from that. I'm really sorry for that inconvenience, you know, and mm -hmm. in the past I would have said, oh, that stupid program screwed me, you know, and it's yeah. that stepping out of the child into that sovereign role. That's yes. That's so you important. Can right? feel. Yeah. And you, it's palpable, you know, when you, when you transition. Yeah. Yeah. All right. The next one, next divine archetype is the warrior, right? You are the protector enforcer of your own boundaries. You are able to rally support for your cause. You take a stand for and fight for what you most desire. And you have a high tolerance for risk from victim to victor. So there was a, that was a hint on the shadow. Yeah. Who do you think is the shadow there? Would be the victim. The I victim, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. You you are disempowered and you disempower others. Yeah. You are ruled by fear. You are focused on the negative outcomes and you do not set boundaries or ask for support. And so the victim, again, is an archetype that we all have. And so you've got to find your warrior energy. You've got to become, you've got to set your boundaries. You've got to set your standards and hold them with integrity, right? And the timing of this reading couldn't be more apropos to the to the nation currently. Yes. I mean, the victimhood that is going on. And I, look, I'm not one to get political on this type of stuff because this is totally different. But we are, there's a large number of people playing the victim currently. 
Yeah. And if you yeah. took, if people took the power into their own hands, I'm not going to criticize people's past lives and the trauma they've gone through. I'm not m diminishing any of that, but you have to take accountability for yourself and move forward. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, and, and I would agree that some uh, groups, some, some collections of people, some um, have had it harder than others. Absolutely. And, and yet, um, uh, but they can't focus on that. They have to focus on, on how to fix the problem. Yes. So, yeah. Um, that's, so, and that's yeah. unfortunate. That's where we're at, you know. But this is, again, we're in this phase of, this is, uh, well, this is a whole nother podcast, but <laughs> this is the age of enlightenment, right? We're in the yeah. age of God. We're in the age of Aquarius. That's right. probably maybe a term people know. Yeah. Um, the golden age. And we are just maturing. Started around 2000. And we're, we're supposed to be adults by 2021. And so what yeah. happened? We're, we're like, we're like teenagers that are rebelling yeah. against everything. Pains. Yeah. We're hitting puberty at an alarming rate right now. We're yes. Just, every, and, all our hormones are just everywhere. So, right. So ultimately <laughs> all of these things will turn into the norm, not the fighting no, and the, and the, the, the idea the, that we're the, of our oneness and that, and that we should allocate resources fairly and that we shouldn't pillage the earth you know everything that, that nice? everything that would yeah so this is the age that we're in now prior to that we were in what was called the iron age or the age of man correct and it and it was really it was okay to do all kinds of terrible things it's not okay now yes and it's so we're okay basically now. And it's not okay thing, now. Right. Well, it was not okay then. It was not okay then, but it wasn't understood <laughs> then. Now that we understand, we need to move forward with it right. not being acceptable and, you know, and to go forward. Yeah. And so the only way to make the world filled with light is to bring all of the darkness out into the light. You can't yes. transform darkness from darkness. The only, and our darkness, our dirty laundry, whatever you want to call it, the underbelly of this nation that was built on um, all types of negative objectives, right? Mm -hmm. And you have to bring it up into the light to be transformed. Correct. And this is the only way we can come into balance and centered and in, into oneness. So fingers crossed that we're going there. But and it's, my toes. It's, I and your toes, right? Because <laughs> this is where we need to be to be in alignment with the, t with the time that we're in, yeah. these ages. Yeah. And, the, and, and a, I mean, the way I simplify it, and it might be a little reductionist, but it's like we're in the, you know, we're trying to make the omelet and we are breaking every egg right now. And every issue is being shown, you know, to your point, shown into the light. And these are very hard conversations to have, but we have to be on the same field to be able to even have those conversations. So we're really coming yes. from one side and the other. We got to, you know, we have to meet at least on the same field. I mean, some, some of us aren't even in the same sport in some cases right now yeah but that's right. the breaking the eggs i mean that's the hardship of the coming out the other side whole better enlightened you know whatever that term would be in a positive way it's really yeah. this this is a transition to positivity yes and and one of the things that uh <laughs> that's so funny i thought i picked the wrong card because my dog started eating my started eating my bedspread when I was picking your cards. And so I, <laughs> I just grabbed one, the future one. Yeah. But it's so relevant for what you just said that I'm going to share it. This card that I, I picked and I put back because I thought I just was being grabby of the cards <laughs> is, is, is the most, one of the most important cards of our time, which is the goddess card, the diva embodies wisdom, guidance, physical grace, athletic prowess, sensuality. Shadow goddess manifests in extreme self-indulgence as seen in movie stars and fashion models. So look for a lifelong association with the image and personality of a particular goddess, such as Athena and the power behind them. Um, so why I think this came into my hand and I put it back is just this conversation. During this new age, this the, the divine feminine has risen. 
right? Yes. Meaning that we were living in a very masculine environment, which was why there was so much pillaging of the earth and wars. But the the divine feminine is about creating your life, co-creating your life with those that you want to be with and the divine. And in order to create the life that you truly want, you have to have standards for your life in your personal, your professional, and your community life that you hold with impeccable integrity. And then the divine masculine, which is abundance and action, comes into your life and says, how can I serve you, my queen? Right? <laughs> so your king is about abundance and action. Your queen is about creativity and compassion. Absolutely. Right? Now, are, are you familiar with a Jordan Peterson by any chance? No. Okay. He's an interesting, he's, he's a, he was a lecturer or he's a professor in Canada and he wrote a book called 12 Simple Rules. Uh, and it's about the masculine being you know, the masculine being the holding on to structure and things and the mm -hmm. feminine being the creative side. We need both. We need we need to be we stable with the masculine and yet expressive and growing and changing with the feminine. And that balance is so delicate. You know, trying to yes. trying to keep that balance of are we changing too quickly to keep and we can't keep up, or are we staying too much stuck in our old ways? And this is that part where we're starting to really accelerate our openness i guess and creativity yes and so because the feminine has risen um because she was held down in the iron age and why because if you have both of your divine feminine your divine masculine working in harmony together then that's when you can become enlightened filled with light Yes. Right. And yes. a and a good global citizen and a good person and just generous and kind and not. And, and if we're sharing resources, then you don't have to worry about not having money. Right. Or not having right. insurance or right. or or whatever you need. If, or, if and, ever, or we just realize that all we need in this life is enough. We enough. just need enough. And mm -hmm. if we were comfortable with being with enough. I think a lot of us would not worry about hoarding and taking from, because it almost feels like, well, if, if you have to have something, you must take it from me. And yes. why can't we all just have it? Have enough. <laughs> have enough, you right? Know, enough has always been one of those mantras. And it's actually, in a weird way, even though it's helped me, it's impeded some of my abundance because I've been in this, oh, I have enough. So I haven't opened myself up to receiving all the greatness that could potentially be coming down the road. In, in as well so yes and i would always say to my clients don't do that <laughs> because allow the abundance to come in yes that was and if hard you, and when me. and when you have enough then use the what you use some of it to help others correct yep. right do do right Absolutely. right yeah. and so if you don't have it you can't do that exactly. so don't yeah. don't impede your flow because you can then take that and 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 support the causes that are important to you yeah and it was a very hard thing for me because of that it was like you know you, you when you start this you don't know how vast your touch or your reach is it's a universal reach mm -hmm. you know so it's really hard to say you know is an, you know i had to go with enough but now i'm at the point where i'm allowing that abundance to open but it is ultimately to serve the future and to make it better mm -hmm. great you know, to give back Yes. So the last of the four, we had the lover, the sovereign, the warrior. The last of the four divine archetypes is the magician. You are the master of creativity and will manifest all you desire in your life. You take responsibility for what is happening in your life. You are willing to appear foolish or do things that don't make sense. When the going gets tough, the magician gets creative intuition is your magic and so the opposite or the the um the opposite the the shadow, the, the shadow thank you yes. of the magician is the saboteur yeah why not right right so you are right. overwhelmed by chaos and you can't see a way out mm -hmm. you your excuses and reasons block your creativity and success you focus on regret of the past and fear of the future 
you don't take responsibility for your negative thinking. So if I was to summarize all of these together from the from the light archetypes, I would say I value myself as the lover more than enough as the sovereign to stand for as the warrior and create as the magician the fullest expression of my being in the world. That is a that lot powerful? of stuff. Yeah, that's powerful. Yeah, for that's sure. powerful. And so I just, I love Thank these. Thank you for new, sharing that. Yeah, I, I, I brought them with me just in case <laughs> it was relevant. So now we're at the point, uh, Mark, where you can ask me your questions. Oh boy. Well, once again, this has been very challenging for me because I've always felt like, like you talk about the self full part, right? The complete part versus the selfish because they are, they do involve me. So it is self ish a little bit. Right. So mm -hmm. I've every reading I've done, I've always just allowed it to guide. So I've never done questions. So I was really struggling over these. Yeah. Um, I'm very comfortable with my love relationship. I don't have any questions about that. Um, my obvious, I would guess to you, I would be most obvious would be the direction of this, both my podcasts. One, one is this one. This is my really like there, there are musicians that say you do the music you want to do so you can do the music or you do the music you have to do to do the music you want to do. You know, mm -hmm. you have to have a, a base of some kind of, you know, income or stability to be able to really be expressive, right? You have to have that base, your base needs covered. So my two podcasts, this one's the serious one. This is the one that I want to have impact. The other one is called Beer Googles. And it's a kind of a joke where you just get where my friend and I get drunk and look up random stuff on the internet. So we have very, <laughs> two very different types of, of uh, podcasts. I was just curious if there's any future for either, I guess would be mm. the broadest way to say that. Mm -hmm. And so what, what is the, what is the desired future? Is there, are you saying that you want them to be recognized podcasts? I would, I mean, ultimately, if I were to say, I would love this to be my future, that I mm -hmm. don't have a nine to five, that, that this, you know, bring people like yourself on to share your stories with the world so that people see another side of anything, you know, something different than what they're experiencing, than they're used to experiencing. So yes, I mean, the success of it, I guess, is the best way to say it, but I don't know the right verbiage, I guess. Yes. So you want this to be your main focus. Yes. Right. Right. Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, what, what, what I'm hearing through your soul's collective is focus on that, focus on the Midas, not the miser. Absolutely. Right. And know in your heart that this will turn to gold. Yeah. Meaning that you'll get the sponsors that you need, that you'll get the backers. Sure. Right. For this, yeah for this because even your name of your podcast is brilliant like Thank i you. loved it you're welcome you. um it really caught my attention when uh when i was you know looking to see where i could be a guest mm -hmm. um and then it's funny that you were the first person to respond to me so <laughs> <laughs> i'm like oh this works. is a match this Absolutely. is a match on matchmaker there you go um and um and so by focusing on that which gives you passion, right, the money always follows. Yeah. And certainly, Spirit said this multiple times today, by focusing on the impact, like what is it that you want the impact to be? I would also say write, write your standards for this program and, and – um, the other one is more fun. Oh, it's totally just a joke. You know? I mean, we have so but, much fun with it. Yes. So for this one, which I think can have a more um, lo long-term impact, write the standards for this, right? Write what you want. Write um, a business outline of where you see this going. Yes. And then hold the vision for that, right? Yeah. And just know that it's already happened. Yeah. Absolutely. Right. And so use the manifesting tools that you've studied mm -hmm. to create this as your as your vision. And because your cards are so powerfully aligned with this, it it the possibility is very strong. Yeah. That if you don't allow the miser energy to undermine you in this, 
you'll get there. Yeah, I think that's, I agree with that. I, I truly believe that I'm just going to keep doing and moving forward with it and not looking at what the results, the results, I, as long as I'm doing it, I feel like I'm, I'm fulfilling my sole purpose in a way. So the, to your point, the abundance comes on the back end of that. It does. And I would say, don't, don't be blind. You know, don't, don't do, don't do it for years and then say, oh, I wonder what the results are. Oh, right. Say, no, say, trust me. Say I look that, at every download, every second of every day. Okay. Okay. So we don't, <laughs> but maybe stop doing that. Right. right? You know, I have to let it right? I have to stop as much. Correct. Yeah. You know, do it like, look, t say, treat this like a business mm -hmm. and then say at the end of the month, I want to look at my results. Right. Absolutely. And see, and then, and then do a comparison and see, see which type of shows are getting the most, you know, the most likes or whatever yeah, it hits, you know, well, and then, yeah. but oh, sorry, do God. what you do, what you love about this, Mark. Yeah. Well, that's right? what's funny about it because the, the two podcasts are so dichotomous. I mean, they're, li it's like I'm bipolar. I mean, I, the stuff that I can say on one that I just unbelievable like how could you come up with that craziness you know <laughs> um but we just have fun with it so and yeah. and it's interesting because the reception's been pretty good is oh you're not just showing all of you on one you know because people for example you know you have one show and then the person does something that's not in line with that show and they're like well that person's so out of character they must be evil because they're not they're lying about who they are so i'm like well i'm going to show both sides of me and that way <laughs> I can't, I'm going to be held to either of the fires, you know? <laughs> well, and we all, we have multiple sides to our personality. Absolutely, yeah. Right? Yeah. Right? Um, yeah. My, you know, and people hold me to such a, like, high standard with that. Mm -hmm. You know, if I even curse, they're like, what? Right. That's not very spiritual of you, Robin. I'm like, shut up. <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah, we do nothing but curse on the other one. <laughs> yeah. Oh, good. I should come on that one and curse with You're you. You're welcome to. Oh, um, if you have a topic that you just found on the internet, we can talk about it for days. <laughs> well, and it's funny, too, because, you know, I grew up in New Jersey, which is, we curse a lot there. I'm from and, Philly, um, so I know. I know oh, see, yeah, so you we're know. Neighbors. Right. So then to come into this world, you know, it's, it's, um, it's, it was quite an adjustment, but it I'm still the same person. Yeah. You know, I just have much more compassion for people and I'm able to see many more perspectives. Yeah. So next question, please. So not, I don't, I don't care about the, like, if I was Cleopatra or anything like that or King, whoever, <laughs> I, but I am curious about the Akashic records. Did you see a past life that, uh, that I was part of, or that was part of me at some point? In mm -hmm. even in general, he's like, it doesn't have to be a name, but just maybe a type of person in a village or a type of person. Yeah. You know, you know. Yeah. So just give me a second. Usually when they want to show me a past life, they'll put like a TV screen up in front of my forehead. So hold on a moment, please. So what I'm seeing Mark, it's in relation to, I'm seeing a lot of lifetimes where you were a musician, but you traveled. Like, you you really weren't settled. Um, mm. You lived this very free lifestyle. And so there could be the struggle going on, because um, this lifetime, you still have that passion for the music, and, and yet you asked to be more grounded, you wanted to be settled down in this lifetime. Yes. But so you have you have to find that magic blend of holding on to your freedom because it's really a part of who you are. Yes. Right? Free right? freedom is my big it's like my biggest thing. Yes. And that comes from all your past lives. And yet in this lifetime you wanted to be more committed right to whatever you feel responsible to I but feel that doesn't that mean for sure yeah but it doesn't mean you can't be free right right so i want to share this i think this will be very helpful um the divine has shared with me a path to success they call it and it applies to ev everything i thought it was the spiritual path to success 
but it applies to anything in life and they want you to understand this. So the first thing, the first uh, step on the journey to success is awareness, right? Awareness of something that's important to you and that you want to become successful at, right? You have yes. to be aware of it, right? Yeah. The second is commitment. This, this commitment is, is defined as committing to becoming the very best version of yourself in this process that's important to you. So it's easiest for me to describe it on the spiritual journey, right? You, mm -hmm. you become aware of spirituality. You're like, wow, what's that? Why is yeah. she talking like that? What does that mean? It sounds good. Wow, I'm kind of resonating with her, even though I have no idea what she's saying, right? The second is commitment. I'm going to start studying this. I'm going to figure out what resonates with me. Like, so for me, it was past lives and um, synchronicity. Those were topics that really got to me. The third is mastery. That's when you really say, I'm going to fully committed to this and I'm going to, I'm either going to find, follow a teacher that I love, or I'm going to be a jack of all trades and I'm going to really study this and I'm going to do my healing and I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to be, you know, just be so engaged. Like when someone says, oh, oh, Robin Claire. Oh yeah. Isn't she, she, she's really spiritual. Isn't she like, right. So you become right. known by what you're passionate about. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Then, and as I said earlier, just to back it up, that's is where most spiritual people get stuck, right? Mm -hmm. The next is service. And, and that is how can I take everything that I've learned about myself, about spirituality, about the world, and share it with others? And so you have this desire to bring information forward or have other experts, in this case on the podcast, bring information forward forward absolutely right? yeah. the 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 fifth one is leadership and that is when you're a leader of your own life right you're actually living the teachings that you're espousing and serving with you become the teachings right mm -hmm. and you also lead others to that life of uh commitment and mastery of their own journey right Yes. You could even see this in corporate, right? Yeah, absolutely. That happens, right? And because you've because you've committed and you've mastered and you've served and you've led, the last is freedom. And freedom is defined as um, making this tremendous impact, right? And then choosing what you want your abundance to be, right? You have choices now. Mm -hmm. When you're in freedom, how do I want to live? Do I want to continue in this role? Do I want to make a change? What is abundance to me? So for me, freedom for me now is this ability to come on these podcasts and just share information to, I have such confidence in what I've learned. I have such confidence in my own healing. I have confidence in my ability to help others that I can come on these podcasts and really make an impact. Yeah. And so your guidance is saying your your soul's collective feel that way about um a feel that way about these podcasts. Yeah. Right? You've come you you have the desire to make an impact, you have the desire to change people's lives, you have the freedom to do it, right? I do, yes. And then I'm ultimately very lucky or great, yeah. you know. Blessed, yeah. I guess, is the best mm -hmm. way to say it. And that. ultimately, when you, if you want to de redefine freedom, which you said you wanted to, it to be more that this is your way of making a living, correct? Yes. That it will come if you continue to to master what you're doing. You know, commit awareness, commit master, serve, lead then the freedom is what is the natural next step. Absolutely. And, it, and, and it's so, interesting you said that about the musician, about the freedom and travel and whatnot is because ultimately I'd love this to be like a remote type thing, you know, broadcast, you know, podcast from Stonehenge, from yes. the pyramids, from Wonderful. Gobekli like Tepe, for example, yes. uh, all these other different, you know, uh, Machu Picchu and all these other places of, you know, past, you know, relevance, right? Spiritually. Yeah. And so there you have it, right? There's the freedom, right? The yeah. freedom is getting coming full circle 
back to who you were in your past lives. And in when people ask me about past lives, they only show the ones that are relevant to this lifetime. Right. And so this is this traveling, doing this, if this is what you want, just put your order in is what your souls collective is saying. <laughs> And I stick think I'm going to start it. doing that. Yeah, stick with it. See yourself yeah. doing it. Make an impact. Um, you know, know that whatever you do turns to gold. Focus on that aspect. Focus on uh, supporting people. Focusing on sharing love and peace yeah. on the podcast. And all of that will come to pass. Yeah. One, my biggest challenge, I think, like to your point, is the abundance part because humility is where I always play it's like it's going to be what it is I don't mm -hmm. you know you always talk it down because growing up that's you know it wasn't always done you know it's like do something you know take out the trash but you didn't take out the trash the right way yes. <laughs> for example in my in my family you know it was not just that I had to do it it had to do be a certain way right so everything's always been humility about well I guess it'll be this I need to step away from that and just embrace you do you know why because humility hard. humility is the opposite of the coin of boasting right and so too much boasting isn't good right. too much humility isn't too, isn't good either and I so and I'm on that side of that coin I need to mm -hmm. get that balance again to your point I was I was there balanced. for a long time in this work and yeah. and and actually my abundance wasn't there right because I was I, I was too I had too much humility so remember this it's gonna take a lot of money to go to these places <laughs> <laughs> True. Right. Yes. So you need to monetize. In this world, yes, we have to do it that way. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yes. You have. To, so you have to monetize this. Right. And there's nothing wrong with that. No, right. Not at all. No. Right. And 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 so you're monetizing it so that you can take people on a journey to places that they may never have be able to get to. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. So good. Thank all right. You. So I think I'm tired. Okay. Um, so but what, I need to close the record. So let yes. me just, let oh, me please. just do thank that. You. Thank yes. you very much. Mm -hmm. I would like to thank the masters, teachers, loved ones, and souls collective for their love and compassion. I would like to thank the Lords of the Akashic Records for their point of view. And I would like to thank the Holy Spirit of Light for all knowledge and healing. The records are now closed. Amen. The records are now closed. Amen. The records are now closed. Amen. There you Excellent. have it. Well, thank you yeah. so much for oh, that. Oh, you're welcome, Mark. That was so, fun. You were so nice in service of me. How how may we get in touch with you, Robin? Yes. Tell us about tell us about your current writing projects and yeah. and where you're going with your uh, business and with your spirituality. Yeah. So um, so my website is clarity.com. C L A R E dash ity.com on instagram i am clarity by robin and on facebook clarity with robin so where i'm most focused on in my work right now is um, i'm still writing books and i'm speaking and um, I'm, I'm out touring i guess on the internet <laughs> <laughs> maybe in person one day with with my current book feast and famine healing addiction with grace and I, I really want people to understand that our primary addiction is to suffering and then we choose um a secondary substance yeah. or vice and and on that point i mean buddha really was the i mean i guess in our history is was one of the first to really acknowledge suffering the attachment to suffering is what we do most or best <laughs> in a way. Yeah. Yeah. And so from that, what I discovered is and and discovered and was asked to do was to uh, to begin to help other people tell their extraordinary story in writing, because we've all lived these amazing lives and 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 not for our own entertainment. You know, we've lived them to be used as a teaching tool. Yeah. So if someone agrees with me on that and they're and they're thinking that there's a book inside of them, they can come to, you know, meet with me and just let's figure out if there's a book. And then, of course, I have all different types of coaching programs to help them to complete their writing project. And 
I'm I'm loving that. It's so interesting to really dive deep into people's lives with them to pull out this amazing content that their soul has driven right yeah. because if if we go back full circle to the beginning of the podcast when we were talking about that our soul has been driving the vessel right, right? so what has happened what's transpired what's all this good content and and what's so lovely about that when you can realize that everything that's transpired is your soul driving the vessel there's an a healing that takes place in your life because it wasn't so random, right? And it had a reason. And typically the reason is to one, fulfill your soul's destiny, but perhaps to share that information with others so that they can heal their lives too. Yeah. And so that's the new direction of my business. And I'm just really excited about that to see if I can help others to, to, get, to get their teachings out there. And I'm excited for you. It's going to be a you. great journey. I mean, mm -hmm. I can only imagine the different types of uh, stories or just content that you're going to help people hone and create. It's not just spiritual. I mean, it's going to be that's going to run the gamut from all different kinds. So it, that's great. it is. And could it you is. could you share the title of the of the program, the writing program again? That's on yes. Your website? It's called Writing from the Heart. Um, because when I was first writing, uh, I'm, I'm a ch I channel books from the Ascended Masters. And so working with uh, Yeshua or many who call, Je who call him Jesus. That's Which his. we talked about the Christ consciousness on the last mm -hmm. podcast. But what he, what he said to me is that I can only work with you if you write from the heart, Robin. If you're up in your head, I can't do it because up in my head, I'd be like, oh, this is boring. Why would anyone want to read this? But in my heart, which is my connection to my own divinity and my and all of divinity, he, I could hear him. Right. So, you know, it's the same as when you're meditating, right? When, you sit, when you're meditating in the group that you said you can really hear because mm -hmm. it's such profound energy. And so to be able to channel a book is a whole nother um skill set but there may be folks like that that have a special guide that they've been listening to their whole lives and are ready to actually one admit that because we can do that now because it's going to end well for all of us here yeah. <laughs> all of us spiritual folks yes um yes. and two they may want to take those special teachings and put them out into the world that's great well, thank you so much for You're taking, welcome, spending a Saturday morning with me. I'm, I feel, mm -hmm. I am blessed. I truly am blessed. This, this has opened up so many avenues and everyone's so gracious and kind and I'm, I'm just grateful for it. So thank you. Yes. You're welcome. And we'll is, talk again soon. Yes. Is there anything else before we close it out? Do you just want to share your website and your information or anything else sure. you want to share? And, sure. And well, um, just clarity.com, C L A R E dash ity.com and ah, and oh yes one more thing thank you for coming back to me i do have a free 30 minute discovery call get on it yeah it's free uh i'm sure that you'll come off that call with some guidance for your life and um and we'll see you know if there's a connection for us to work together going forward but even if that's not true there will still be guidance for you. And there will be a connection because you've made that. Yes. Connection. So yes, please reach absolutely. out clarity, C L A R E dash I T Y.com. I believe mm -hmm. your 30 minute is on that main page, but you know, you've got your menu and your about section. And everything, oh yeah. So. It's actually on every page. So get on that. So <laughs> I don't I, want you to miss it. <laughs> I can tell you this. I, I've, I had an astrologer, a professional astrologer, 34 years uh, from New York city on a couple of weeks ago. And I've shared the video already with some people and they've already reached out to him so i i'm hoping that this akashic mm -hmm. record reading would would open up other people to reach out to you and and to get some more guidance uh insight whatever they could get mm -hmm. from that great thank, so you, thank you mark you very much for being here once again everybody this has been a knocked conscious episode with robin claire best-selling author her newest book feast and famine healing addiction with grace robin thank you so much you're welcome have Take a great care. day all righty bye-bye
Once again, that was Robin Clare, author of Feast and Famine, Healing Addiction with Grace. She also has a writing program, Writing from the Heart. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Knocked Conscious. Once again, you can get a hold of me, Mark, at www.knockedconscious.com, or you can email me directly at info at knockedconscious.com. You can catch our podcast pretty much everywhere, Apple, Spotify, Google, you name it. Thanks again for checking in, and we'll talk to you guys soon.